Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. This is the largest and most heavily armed gunship on the planet, the Lockheed AC-130. A heavily adapted variant of the C-130 Hercules transport aircraft, nearly every inch of its 100-foot fuselage carries some form of weaponry. Known by its fearsome nickname, the Angel of Death, the AC-130 can be fitted with an astonishing mix of cannons and machine guns, including a 105mm M1 not 2 howitzer, a 40mm Bofors cannon, and a 25mm GAU-12 equalizer, a five-barrel Gatling-style gun. It can also accommodate missiles, rocket pods, and even GBU-39 small diameter bombs, making it a devastating force against enemy troops and vehicles. Conversely, it often becomes a literal lifesaver for allied forces in need of close air support. The AC-130's weapons configuration can be altered to suit each mission. Whether the aircraft is tasked with supporting ground forces, escorting a convoy, or providing aerial firepower in combat, the aim is to equip it to strike a wide range of targets, from armored vehicles to fortified buildings. Weapons load crews handle the loading and upkeep of these systems, managing everything from bombs and missiles to gun ammunition and other ordnance. Given the AC-130S vast array of armaments, this process can be lengthy especially when handling the howitzer shells, each roughly two feet long and weighing about 100 pounds. I like Carlson. These, along with other munitions, are secured in specialized racks to prevent movement during flight. One of the most critical steps in operating a C-130 is the pre-flight inspection. Usually, the aircrew performs this while ground crews refuel and ready the aircraft for departure. Like many modern military planes, the AC-130 uses sophisticated digital systems and electronics, and pre-flight checks follow strict procedures to ensure every system is mission ready. The crew begins by powering up the onboard computers and conducting diagnostics. This covers navigation and communications gear, along with weapons control systems. They also test sensors, surveillance equipment, and flight controls. Key defensive and navigational tools, as well as electronic countermeasures, are evaluated at this stage. An AC-130 typically flies with eight crew members, each with assigned roles during pre-flight, in-flight operations, and combat. In high-pressure situations, precise coordination among them is vital.
Despite its bulk, the AC-130 is agile in the air. It has a maximum takeoff weight of about 155,000 pounds and can reach speeds exceeding 416 miles per hour. Although its service ceiling is 39,000 feet, it usually flies much lower to deliver effective heavy weapons support. Once airborne, the AC-130 poses a threat to adversaries on land, sea, or in the sky. Its unmatched adaptability and firepower allow it to engage and destroy virtually any target. A standard AC-130 mission has two pilots and two combat systems officers in the cockpit. Pilots focus on flying the plane, often under demanding conditions such as low-altitude maneuvers and operations in combat zones. CSOs manage the weapons systems targeting and firing guns, cannons, and missiles, while coordinating with special flight officers stationed in the rear. Some weapons, like the howitzer, must be manually operated, so specific crew members handle these directly. To ensure peak readiness, AC-130 crews regularly perform live fire training. This hands-on experience sharpens their skills with all onboard systems, preparing them for real-world engagements. Training covers both weapons operation and maintenance, with an emphasis on aiming coordination, where multiple crew members work together on a single weapon to improve efficiency and accuracy. The AC-130 is engineered to unleash relentless firepower bullets rockets, and shells onto ground targets. With well-practiced aiming coordination, crews can reliably hit intended targets, whether they are stationary, moving, or airborne. While air crews focus on combat performance, maintenance teams work just as hard to keep the aircraft itself in fighting shape. Regular inspections conducted daily, weekly, or monthly help identify and resolve issues before they escalate. Because the AC-130 systems are complex, specialized teams handle the upkeep of weapons, sensors, and avionics. Structural checks are also performed to ensure the aircraft's integrity, looking for any damage or wear, particularly before and after missions. In 2020, the last three AC-130U Spooky aircraft from the 4th Special Operations Squadron were retired with a ceremonial flyover at Hurlburt Field, Florida. These gunships had served more than 25 years 
and their safe retirement underscored the skill and dedication of both the crews who flew them and the teams who maintained them. Among the U.S. military's formidable rotary wing aircraft, none is more feared than the Apache AH-64 attack helicopter. Developed in the 1970s to replace the AH-1 Cobra, the AH-64 was designed for multiple missions but ultimately optimized for air-to-ground attacks with a focus on long-range precision strikes against armored targets. The AH-64 carries a variety of armaments, including the M-230 chain gun, AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, and Hydra-70 rockets. Over time, new weapons have been tested to enhance its capabilities. In 2008, Raytheon developed Talon-guided missiles, featuring semi-active laser guidance mounted on 2.7 5-inch unguided rockets. Fully compatible with Hydra 70 launchers, these required no structural changes to the helicopter. The AH-64D Apache Longbow served as the test platform, launching 35 missiles with seven direct hits, meeting or exceeding all objectives. Talon-guided missiles paved the way for another leap forward mounting a high-energy laser on a helicopter. Apache crews, in addition to specialized laser training, regularly conduct aerial gunnery and live fire drills. Although these exercises are costly, they ensure pilots remain proficient with all weapon systems. The U.S. also experimented with airborne lasers on larger platforms, such as the YAL-1 Airborne Laser Testbed, ALTB, which mounted a megawatt-class chemical oxygen iodine laser inside a modified Boeing 747-400F. Designed to destroy tactical ballistic missiles during their boost phase, the system successfully eliminated a boosting missile over the Pacific on the 11th of February, 2010. The process involved detecting the missile with onboard sensors, tracking it with a low-energy laser, correcting for atmospheric effects, and finally firing the high-energy beam until the missile failed structurally. This proved that missile defenses could strike multiple targets at light speed with lower cost per shot than traditional systems. Laser weapons have also been tested at sea. The U.S. Navy developed the AN-SEQ-3 Laser Weapon System, or XN-1 laws, operable with a controller similar to those used for video games. It can respond to threats with escalating force from non-lethal optical dazzling to full destruction. In 2014, Laws was mounted on the USS Ponce, where it neutralized a UAV and a simulated small boat attacker. The crew first destroyed targets on a small boat launched from the ship. then tracked and shot down a drone, heating its wing until it failed and crashed into the sea. These tests were historic, not only marking the first laser weapon deployment on a Navy ship, but also showing Loss's seamless integration with existing defense systems. From the legendary AC-130 gunship to cutting-edge laser platforms tested on land, sea, and air, 
the U.S. military continues to expand the frontiers of firepower. These weapons embody decades of innovation, fusing overwhelming destructive force with precision technology to protect troops, eliminate threats, and command the battlefield. Whether delivering close air support, intercepting missiles, or striking at light speed, each advance reflects America's drive to maintain a decisive technological advantage. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.